Drawing a cute otter is way easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be drawing in an app called Procreate on the iPad Pro, but you can follow along this tutorial with whichever digital art software that you have, as long as you have layers, you'll be able to follow. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to create a canvas in which we can draw. For reference, these are the dimensions of my canvas. It is literally just the size of the iPad Pro screen, but make sure that you use a canvas size that works for your own project requirements. And if you're not sure what that means, I have a video in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to pick a canvas size, so I will link it in the description below. Now for this project, you can definitely change the background color. I like going in with a grayish blue, like this one. You can pick whatever you want, but we're going to later add some texture to make it feel like it is some stylized water. So definitely start with that if you want, and then we're going to move on to actually sketching the otter. For that, create a new layer, rename it to sketch, and since we're drawing on a colored background, you might want to change the blending mode of this layer to multiply just so that we see what we're doing a little bit better. And you can use whichever color you want for the sketch because we're not going to see it in the final result anyway. So I'm just going with gray, but feel free to pick whatever you would like. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different brushes. So one is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and that you can definitely use to follow along and you're going to get great results. And the other brush is going to be a brush from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle, which will help you get your illustration to the next level, save some time and just get more professional results. So if you want to check it out, it will be linked in the description below along with a special promo code for the YouTube people. For the sketch, you can use either the HB pencil that comes with Procreate, it is in the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the sketching brush, of course. And we're simply going to start by drawing the body, which is going to look like this little bean right here. And you don't need to be super precise, as long as you have a bean that roughly looks like this, you're good to go. You're then going to draw an oval for the head, nothing complicated, and one side is going to poke out and align with the bottom of the bean, just like this. Now for the tail, you want to make sure that it is roughly in the same kind of, you know, curvature as the rest of the body so that the flow and the movement makes sense. And it is going to be pretty much the same length as the bean, so you can use that as a visual guide. And at this point, there's no need to be super precise, just map out the general shapes and later in the process, we're going to refine everything and find our lines. Once you have the tail, go ahead and draw two ovals on the bottom for the legs and then two ovals on top of the other ovals for the feet. Something like this. You're then going to draw two little circles for the top of the top arms. So something like this one is going to be pretty much in the center of the bean and the other one is going to be kind of on the side. And then you're going to draw this shape that um, <laughs> I can only describe as, you know, the peeps, the marshmallow birds, kind of like peeps. Um, <laughs> and these are going to be the arms of the otter. We're also going to go back and refine the head a little bit, adding kind of a um, curvy W shape on the bottom. So something like this. Again, you don't need to be precise. We're going to go back and find our lines later. We're just kind of mapping out everything for now. And one thing that is really going to make our otter look like an otter is having this massively big nose. So it is roughly half of the height of the head and pretty much, you know, placing it in the center. And for the eyes, we're just going to go with these two little, you know, cute closed eyes. So just two little curves and then kind of adding, it's not necessarily a mouth, more like a chin <laughs> below the head. The ears are super simple, they're pretty much just two little blobs um, on top of the head and you want to make them roughly the same size as the forearms. And you can give your otter anything to hold, I'm just going to go with a cookie, so for now I'm just going to sketch a circle. And I also like to add two little floppy hairs, I guess, on the top of the head just to make it a little bit more dynamic. And we're now going to refine our very rough sketch. And for that, I really like to flip it. So using the arrow tool, just clicking flip horizontal. That way we get a much fresher look at what we've drawn. It's kind of like, you know, just a fresh eye and we can kind of see stuff that doesn't work quite as well as we might think. So it is a good tip whenever you don't necessarily have the time to take time away from your sketch to just flip it. That way you do get kind of a fresher look, like I was saying. 
without needing to, you know, get away from it for a few hours. And at this point, what you want to do is what I call find your line. So with all the rough sketch lines that we've drawn, you want to kind of select the one that is going to be the proper line. And that is really a good tool or good trick to do whenever you're sketching because that way you're going to get illustrations that are way more fluid and you might find and stumble upon things that you are not necessarily thinking would look good but since you've had many lines when you kind of see them come together you're going to get you're going to get shapes that you are not really expecting basically and it's also a much more efficient way of doing it as opposed to trying to sketch you know the perfect line from the get-go it's just way harder to do it that way so you just go over and press harder or you can make your color darker or your brush bigger but basically you just want to see a difference between you know all the rough sketch strokes and then the still rough sketch but the one that is going to be a bit more precise um, and the one you're going to go with for the colors the details and the shading later so hopefully that makes sense, but basically all you're doing here is just kind of refining your sketch a little bit and picking the lines that you like the most from all the lines that you sketched in the rough sketch. And once you're happy, still doesn't need to be crazy precise as you can see here, you can go back and flip your sketch and then we're gonna move on to adding the colors. So first thing we're going to do here is go back in our layer panel and lower the opacity of your sketch layer until we can just barely see it. We're then going to create a new layer and put it below the sketch layer and we're going to rename this one to base. So this is where we're going to draw the kind of silhouette of the otter in one solid plain color. And to pick the color we're going to use for the otter, you can go back in your color panel and pick the blue that you have for the background from the history. Then go in the harmony panel and select at the top complementary. It's going to suggest you an orange color and you can click on this one. Go back in the classic panel and then you're going to be able to turn this orange into a brown. And doing that, you're going to make sure that both your brown and your blue go really well together so you're going to have a nice color palette. In terms of brush, you can use either the hard brush from the airbrushing panel, making sure that you bring the opacity back up to 100% if you watch my watercolor tutorials. Or you can go in the ultimate illustration bundle if I can find it. There we go with the base round brush. So you just want a solid brush that doesn't have any texture to it at this point. And all we're going to do is we're going to outline the otter to then fill it in. And here it is really important to be loose and fairly quick so that your curves are smooth and nice. And if you feel like that is not necessarily something super easy for you, it might be helpful for you to start doing some warm ups before you draw, especially before you start drawing kind of outlines like this. I have a video that is, you know, a quick warm up, nine minutes, and it's going to really help you, like I was saying, just kind of get smoother lines in general and improve your illustration. So I will link it in the description below. But basically, here, all we're doing is I mean, I said it three times already, I think, but yeah, we're just creating this outline so that we can then fill in the silhouette of the otter. And it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and comment cookie. I know it might sound crazy, but we've been doing this for a few months and it's just really great. It gives me so much insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. And it's also really nice because you guys know me, but I don't know you. And whenever you leave a comment, whatever the comment is, I get to see, you know, sometimes your name, your face, and it's just really great to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on this channel. So go ahead and comment with cookie and then we'll keep going and when i say we keep going we're just going to fill in our outline which by now should be pretty much ready and once you have your silhouette we're going to add a little bit more texture so go ahead and create a new layer and apply it as a clipping mask like this you're also going to rename the layer to texture and what a clipping mask does it basically allows us to draw whatever we want on the texture layer and it is going to stay within the shape of the base layer so what we're going to do is we're going to make our brown a little bit lighter, quite quite a bit much lighter actually, and we're gonna pick either the 6B pencil from the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the basic texture. And we're just going to cover the entire surface with our texture. So you can see here just something super simple. I do have a pro tip for you though. When you're trying to cover a texture, try to avoid doing little zigzags like this and try to do more of a loop 
kind of motion. You're gonna get a texture that is way more even and just looks better overall. And it's a simple little trick, but it does make a big difference. So just try to kind of retrain your, your hand and your arm to kind of change the motion from zigzag to loop if you notice that you have more of a tendency to draw little zigzags when you're covering a surface. And just, yeah, cover your entire otter with that new texture and yeah, super simple. And one of the reasons we've drawn the texture and the base on separate layers is so that we can adjust the color. So going back on the base layer here, you can then go in the adjustment panel here at the top, select hue, saturation and brightness for the entire layer. And that's going to allow you to change the brightness. So doing that, you're going to be able to get more or less contrast between your base and your texture. So play around until you get something that you like. And then we're gonna go create a new layer above the texture layer. It is also going to be a clipping mask. And on this layer, we're going to draw the white. So you can rename this layer to white. I mean, it's more gonna be a cream color, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Speaking of which, go ahead and take a lighter version of your brown. So a cream color, don't shift the hue, stick with the same kind of brown, just again, make it super pale. And with the same texture coloring and technique that we use for the texture, <laughs> you're gonna go in and color in the bottom half of the face, so something like that. You're also going to color in the belly, and for the belly, don't worry about covering the arms for now, it doesn't matter, we're going to clean it later. All you want now is focusing on trying to get a smooth texture with your cream color. So coloring in the belly, and for the tail, what I personally like to do is just color in kind of the middle part of the tail, so having two brown lines around the cream a little bit like what you're gonna see in a few seconds, like this. So once you have your cream color looking something like this, we're gonna go and like I was saying, kind of clean up the arms and the legs and everything. So for that, go ahead and reactivate, well not reactivate, but bring up the opacity of your sketch a little bit more so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And on your white layer, you're going to activate the layer mask. And masks are a really powerful tool, and if you're not familiar with them, I highly recommend you go and watch my video about masks, I'm gonna link it in the description below. But for now, you can just keep in mind that everything we erase on this layer mask is gonna look like it is erased from the white layer, but it is actually not. So that way we can kind of protect our texture while still erasing the arms that should not be white. So just take your time here to go over all your, you know, little sections of the otter that should not be white but are white right now erase them and uh yeah nothing super complicated but make sure you take the time to really clean it up and get it to a state that you like it is normal that it's not going to be super crisp and clean because we're going to add the details later but for now you just want to you know get it in pretty good shape something that looks a little bit like this and then we're going to move on to shading and at this point, you're totally free to merge all of these layers together. And the way to do it is super simple. You just take two fingers and literally squish them together like this. I personally like to keep them separate if I want to tweak the color later, but yeah, that's a personal preference. No matter your layer merging or non-merging situation, the next step is going to be to create a new layer above everything we have and apply it as a clipping mask as well. We're going to change the blending mode of this layer by tapping on the little N next to the check mark and we're going to pick linear burn. For now you can put it at 50% or something like that, but we're going to tweak it soon enough, believe me. And you're going to rename this layer to shadows. Here I'm going to pretend that the light is coming from the top left like this. So that means all our shadows are going to be focused on the right side of the otter. And from the shadows, I like to pick a grayish purple. It is just a little bit more lively than just a pure gray, so something a little bit like this. You can make it a little bit more blue since our otter is going to be on a blue background. As for the brush, we're just going to stick with what we had, so either the basic texture or the 6B pencil. And we're going to start by shading the entire back leg, and we're using the exact same texture, or technique I should say, that we used for the texture, so this little looping motion. And you can see probably already uh, it is too dark, so we're going to lower the opacity again around 40%, but feel free to tweak it and find something that you like that blends well with your own colors. You're also going to basically outline the bottom of the face and then connect that with the side of the body, so something a little bit like this. So basically you're just 
thinking that the head is casting a shadow on the body. You're going to do the same thing with the arms. So the arms are casting a, a shadow on the body. Same with the cookie. We don't have the cookie yet, but it will be casting a shadow on the body, other arm as well. And just basically, yeah, thinking what is going to be casting a shadow on the body and what is going to be in the shade because the light is on the opposite side. So this right side of the body, you're going to want to kind of do more of a gradient on the head and the belly. So starting pressing hard on the outside edge and then pressing lighter and lighter the closer you get inside the shape. You're probably going to cover the entire right ear, probably most of the right arm as well. You're gonna get a shadow next to the foot, so the foot is gonna cast a shadow on the belly, and same with the leg. So yeah, you're basically, like I was saying, just kind of adding shadows, thinking of where your light source is. If your otter is in a different environment than this, make sure that obviously your shadows work with uh, the, the general source of light in um, in your own illustration. And one little detail here you might want to add as well is a shadow next to the nose. So right now we don't have the nose, but it's just going to kind of make it pop a little bit more if you have a shadow on one side. And at this point, I highly recommend you go back and lower the opacity of your sketch quite a lot so you get a better feel for all the shadows you've drawn, making sure that um, what you see is not a sketch, it is actually on your shadow layer. And once you're happy with everything, go ahead and create a new layer above the shadows, apply it as a clipping mask and change the blending mode to add. Now add is a really strong blending mode, so you're going to want to lower the opacity quite a lot, you know, around 20% or something like that. And you're going to rename this layer to lights. For the color, I personally really like to go with a super bright yellow. You could go with a bright green, you know, you can experiment. And we're going to stick with the same brush, we're just going to make it smaller. And all we're going to do here, it doesn't look super realistic, um, <laughs> but we're kind of going to outline, I guess, uh, with, with light. So we're just going to pretend that basically the light is coming from behind the otter. So we're just going to help making it really pop and separate a lot from the background. Not necessarily right now, but when we have the outline, definitely it is going to make it pop quite a lot. And here I would say the general rule is, yeah, you want to outline your otter, but without fully outlining it. What I mean by that is you're going to focus your lines mostly on the left and on the top of the otter. That being said, it is kind of a loose rule, meaning if you have um, a body part that overlaps another, like the head is overlapping the body, the feet is overlapping the body as well, and the arms are overlapping the body, basically whenever there's an overlap, you can use this kind of light layer to create a separation between the different body parts. So this is something that you're going to get a feel for yourself. That being said, it might not come naturally the first time you do it. So if it's your case, don't worry, you can just copy exactly what I'm doing. That's totally fine. But using this backlighting highlight technique is going to really help in general make your characters pop when you have a background, especially, you know, when you're going for more of a cartoon or children's book kind of vibe it just brings everything to life really nicely and you know and it's not super complicated of a technique it just it takes a little bit of practice to get a feel for it but honestly once you do get a feel for it every time you use it you're just going to bring your entire illustration to life i know i keep saying it but it's just i i can't get enough of it and right now it looks a little bit rough because we're going to have to play with the opacity later and without the outlines it'll look kind of strange but trust me, it's going to come together really, really nicely once we add the details in just a few steps. So take all the time you need. I'm going to stop talking to let you focus a little bit and then we're going to meet up and keep going with an extra little touch of color before moving on to the details. Great, so once you have all your highlights, go ahead and play with opacity again, like I was saying, just so you get something that you like the blending of. That is a personal preference. You might like it to be a bit more strong. I like it to be uh, kind of in between. So I went with 26%, I think. And then you're gonna create a new layer above everything. You're going to rename it to extra color and you're gonna apply it as a clipping mask and change the blending mode of it to soft light or overlay I think. Honestly you can pick 
either either of those it's gonna work really well since this is kind of a special effect you can just pick whatever you like and here we're gonna do something kind of strange but we're gonna go and pick a super intense blue so like almost an indigo well that's that's a bit like a royal blue so something like that and with our same brush we're just going to kind of brush over the left side of our otter and you can see here it is kind of adds a little bit more color variation and it feels like the otter is little bit more blend in with the background so if you have a different color than blue for your background make sure that you know you pick a color that matches your background a little bit more and uh, you don't want to have any super sharp edges here you want to have something a bit more soft in your coloring here so kind of gradients and you might want to focus this kind of on the intersection so whenever there is kind of a, a sharp corner <laughs> i guess so for example between the tail and the body um, between the head and the body kind of in those section you want to add kind of that extra color you can see here if we hide a layer it just just kind of adds a little just more life to the illustration makes it feel a little bit more polished and kind of more professional too so yeah at this point just go ahead and play with the opacity of your shadows your light and your extra color layers until you get something that you like and then we're going to move on to adding the details which is going to bring everything together and make it actually look good so for the details, we're going to start with a new layer. <laughs> At this point, you probably know the drill. So rename this layer to details. This one is not going to be a clipping mask and we're just going to keep the blending mode as normal. Now for the color, you're going to go back to your brown if it is still in your history. Otherwise, you're going to color pick it. You want to make sure that it is a dark version of your brown and you're going to make it even darker. In terms of the brush, you're going to go either in the sketching panel picking the 6B pencil or if you have the illustration bundle, pick the outline brush. And here we're not going to go with like a thick, black, clean outline like you would get in comics book, for example. We're going to go with something a little bit more subtle in the sense that uh, you're going to want to have some variety in the thickness of your outlines and you're not necessarily going to outline everything either. So start by kind of outlining wherever there's an overlap. So for example, you can see here, I started with the bottom of the head overlapping the body. So something like that. And um, you're gonna kind of build on top of that, adding the details obviously when there is nothing else to show them. So like the, um, the chin little detail here, the toes, the fingers, all the details that you don't see if you don't draw them here on this detail layer, you will obviously draw. But you can experiment with the outlines themselves and have some areas where you don't necessarily have an outline, it just you know stops with the base color and the texture color. So you can, yeah, get a feel for it, experiment. You can definitely just follow exactly what I'm doing and outline the same things as I am outlining. But just like for the light layer where I was telling you, this is something you're gonna get a feel for the more you do it. This is the same thing with your outlines. And you can see here, I'm even kind of um, like sketching and shading a little bit on this details layer as well. So seriously, here, all you want to do is kind of bring everything together by defining the different shapes a little bit more and putting emphasis on a few little details that are important as well. So again, I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus and let you experiment. And we're going to get back together just in a few minutes. And I'm going to give you a few more tips before we move on to the next step.
Okay, so I hope it is going well. I hope you're having fun with your outlines. If you're ready to move on, we're going to start adding some extra details, well, extra details, extra elements like the eyes. So just kind of coloring that in. You might also want to kind of thicken the point of the bottom of the face, kind of to make it look like it's a, a, a smile almost. And at this point, you might also want to go in and add little groups of two or three hairs. So it is a nice way of showing, you know, that this um, this otter has some fur and it's not just like a plastic toy or something like that without going in and actually drawing, you know, a whole lot of fur. So just go ahead and sprinkle them here and there. You don't want to overdo it either, but it is a nice little detail or a nice little touch that you can add on this detail here. You can also add some whiskers. So for that, you can go ahead and pick a really pale gray and just go ahead and I mean, <laughs> draw the whiskers. There is nothing crazy special here, but it does bring a lot of movement and life to your otter. So definitely don't skip it. I, I personally usually draw three on the cheeks and then kind of two on the forehead. I'm not sure that's really accurate, but <laughs> I think it looks cute. So I'm going with that. Okay, so now we're missing a few key elements like the nose. <laughs> so for that, go ahead and create a new layer. I personally like to just draw the entire nose on one layer. So it is a normal layer, not a clipping mask, nothing crazy. And you're going to rename it to nose. Now for the color, I like to go with um, kind of a grayish version of our main brown. And with the same brush that we've been using for the details, so the outline brush or the 6B pencil, you can just go ahead, outline your nose, and then fill it in. You're then going to open your layer panel and with two fingers swipe your nose layer towards the right. So this is going to activate alpha lock. If it doesn't work, you can manually activate it in the layer menu like this. And basically what the alpha lock does is everything we draw on the nose layer is going to stay within this base shape. So it is a little bit like the clipping mask, but on just one layer instead of two. And since the nose is fairly simple, I personally like to keep it all, all on one layer. And with alpha lock activated, you can then go ahead, make your gray darker and just color in the nostrils, I guess, <laughs> but basically kind of two half moon on either sides of the nose. And then you can shade in the bottom of the nose pretty much up to almost the middle with some sort of a really simple gradient. You're then gonna go back and pick a super light version of your browns, so almost a, the same cream color as we did for the, um, the belly. And you're just going to add some little highlights on the nose. So I like to draw one big line that kind of outlines the nose and then two really stretched out ovals. You can also really thinly outline kind of the top part of the nostrils, but basically you want to make the nose look super, super shiny because usually it is kind of wet and, you know, just cute. <laughs> so once you're done, you can deactivate alpha lock and hide your sketch color pick the darker gray that you used, make it even darker and just kind of outline the nose itself. Again, just on the same layer. We don't need to switch anything, make it more complicated. Just make sure that you are still <laughs> with your outline brush or your 6B pencil, which you should still be. There is no reason to change. Uh, I, I was just double checking. So anyway, <laughs> and you can kind of outline the bottom half of the nostrils as well and maybe kind of shade in the bottom a little bit. Um, I mean, Nothing crazy here, but it just brings a little bit more texture since we didn't add full-on texture on the nose. So yeah, you can see already our, our little otter is looking really good. I like to go in and kind of put the details layer on alpha lock so that I can color the eyes with the same dark gray that I use for the outlines of the nose. It just helps make them pop a little bit more. Then you can just deactivate the alpha lock on the details layer as well. So at this point, we need to do the cookie. For that, go ahead and create a new layer, put it below the details layer, and then it might automatically activate as um, clipping mask. So just go ahead and deactivate that if it happens and rename this layer to cookie. I'm going to go and color pick the highlight on the otter for my cookie base. That way I know it's going to look good and it's going to be a color that, you know, matches with the rest of my color palette, but you can pick whichever color you want. And here you're just going to outline your cookie, both the outside as well as where the arms are kind of over the cookie. So you just want to make sure that you have your full shape outline. And then just like for everything else, you're going to fill it in with color drop. And here I kind of did it <laughs> not super well. So feel free to use the eraser and kind of tweak the shape as well until you get 
a shape that you like for your cookie but i mean keeping in mind it is a cookie you don't want a perfect circle otherwise it's gonna look kind of strange <laughs> And just like for the nose, we're going to activate alpha lock on the cookie layer by swiping it with two fingers to right to right. And then we're going to add the texture directly on this layer. So making your base color lighter, picking the base texture brush or the 6B pencil, you can still keep that one. You're just going to, yeah, add some texture. So exactly like we did for the otter in general, just adding some texture on the cookie layer itself. You can then deactivate alpha lock and we're going to outline it so just going back to the main color you use for the base making it darker at this point you're an expert i'm sure picking the outline brush or sticking with the 6b pencil and just outlining your cookie you can see here or you're gonna see real real soon for some reason i really struggled so um hopefully <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's not as big of a deal as it is for you as it is for me um but yeah <laughs> just outlining the cookie it's not not super complicated i guess i was just getting tired of um filming and needing some food in my belly so anyway outline your cookie and once it is done you can go ahead and kind of add a little fun shapes in it to kind of show that there's crumbs in the cookie so i like to go with spirals little open not circles but like c shapes and, and stuff like that you're then going to color pick a dark dark brown if you want to add chocolate chips on your cookie which i really hope you do because chocolate chip cookies are like best thing in the world <laughs> so um yeah then you can just add some chocolate chip cookies uh chocolate you can just add some chocolate chip to your cookie <laughs> I'm sorry guys so yeah just sprinkle them around you can also go back and change your brown to a super light brown to add some highlights on your chocolate chip to make them look so glossy and tasty you can also make your brown super dark to go ahead and add some outlines on your chocolate chip and also kind of some shading so there's a lot of stuff you can do here on this step to just make your chocolate chip pop and i don't know about you guys but this is making me crave a chocolate chip cookie so <laughs> badly Ooh, let me know in the comments if you're also craving chocolate chip cookies now or just cookies in general because i for sure am but anyway once you have your cookie done we only have one thing left to do which is kind of create this like pattern in the background so for that i'm just going to hide my reference and then we're going to group all of our outer layer together by swapping them toward the right and then clicking on group here at the top and you can then collapse the group by clicking on the arrow Speaking of arrow, I'm going to use the arrow tool just to kind of center my otter again. And um, you can use the snapping option in the left corner. That way you're going to get kind of guides that are going to show you what the middle of your canvas is. But honestly here, I don't necessarily care about that. So <laughs> I'm not necessarily going to do that. What I'm going to do though is create a new layer, put it below the otter layer and rename it to waves. This layer we're going to change the blending mode of to screen and for now we're going to keep the opacity at 100 percent and we're going to pick a super 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 light gray with the same brush that you've been using so the outline brush or the 6b pencil you're just going to go ahead and draw some curvy little shapes and then filling them in so here there's no rule you just want to kind of have some movement behind your otter it's going to make your piece just more interesting in general if you're not necessarily drawing your otter in a different context if you're drawing it in a full illustration you can definitely you know not do this step but if you're just drawing your otter by itself it is a nice little touch to add and it's not super complicated so yeah something super simple like that and i personally like to go ahead and add some little not necessarily bubbles but kind of ovals and circles next to the waves just to make it feel a little bit more detailed and interesting and full of life and movement <laughs> this was really the um the keyword this <laughs> this video huh full of life and movement that was my favorite favorite word but it is important when you're drawing you want your illustrations to look like they're full of life and movement so you know i, I guess that's what it is <laughs> And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to like this next one, which is how to draw a cute bear two ways. And right before you leave to go watch the bear video, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.